Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, I've been working on a few little things over the last few days since we've had our rainwater tank put in. And a couple of the experiments we were running was all about the overflow. And what I wanted to do initially was run a uh, my overflow, which is gonna be a standard 90 mil, and I reduced it into a dripping irrigation um, sort of system. Same as what we use in the, in the chicken coop. And it just, the holes were too fine for the volume of water that we had and we started backflowing up on the, on the rainwater tank. It wasn't gonna work. Anyway, I was talking to a, a guy down the road and about my frustration and he goes, look, I've got a truckload of this, mate. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so what this is, is slotted irrigation pipe and I think it may work the same way where the water can come down and the water can exit all these little slots here um, but also take be used as as drainage and I've been thinking and thinking about it anyway so I picked it up and what I've decided to do is actually flatten this make it really thin so I'm going to run over it with the tractor and do something like that and then going to put it into the cuts that we make with the pipe layer I'm going to stick this in and it's going to have a two-pronged attack on this over winter what I'm finding is that I get a lot of seepage coming through this little orchard here and as you can see this is a little mulberry tree and it's just got too much water. The ground is just super, super wet. The mulberry tree next to it, not a problem in the world. So what I've got is an, an issue a little bit with too much water in this top section of the orchard coming down from the chicken coop. So this is, this is my plan. <laughs> I'm gonna flatten this. I'm gonna run over it with the tractor and what I'm going to do is come from the back of the rainwater tank in a large sweep and on a little downward gradient, I'm going to aim sort of, you might be able to see the pipe laying out there to see if I had enough. And I'm going to sort of aim for that sort of direction. And what I'm hoping is that not only will we have the overflow running through, but in those really wet events where I get too much water here, I'm hoping that this will capture some of that runoff because this will be subterranean um, and push the water that way. And I've got a slight little ridge over there um, where we've been planting a lot of the olive trees. And so what I want to do is see if I can get some water over to them. And, 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 and that's, really where we want to be so you know <laughs> it's like everything here at fat cow farm trials and tribulations but i'm thinking that this this may work as a two-pronged attack um taking the overflow using it as irrigation but if it gets too much then it would take it away as drainage so that that's where i'm sort of heading so what i need to do firstly is jump on the tractor come around and make my ditch and then I'm going to flatten this out um, with the tractor and make it almost like a pancake and I'm pretty lucky because this has got the geofab um, sock you know so I'm not going to get a lot of debris and stuff like that um, in this so that's going to be that's going to work an absolute treat for us so and we'll dig this in as far as we can and then um, and then we'll need to then bury I'm going to have to come out with solid solid 90 mil PVC from the back of the, um, the rainwater tank, and then I'll start my sweep. And then off I go from there. So hopefully I can get my tractor around that tight bend, and, um, and then we can go from there. So let me get on the tractor. We'll see if I can do what I can do about getting this corner sorted out. Then I'll flatten this out, and I'll show you how well that went. So I've got it laying in the sun at the moment, just so it softens up a little bit, so I'm not actually cracking it per se. Um, and then I'll stuff that in and we'll just wait for winter. <laughs> 
So, all right, I'll see you soon. So I actually decided to flatten it first, um, just because I had a clean run, really. But it worked. But <laughs> um, I had to do it twice. It had some. It's got a, a memory, which I thought was a, a bit full on, you know, for for extruded um, plastics. Here we go. All right. So I, that's now compressed, and I'll be able to slot that into the groove that the um, pipe layer makes now, because this is. I think this was about 100 mil, and there was no way I could get that this into the groove that the um, pipe layer makes. I think that's a, I think that's a 75 or a 50 or something like that. But anyway, so once I cut my my let's say key line, um, I'll be able to stick this in into the um, into that trench, and what I'll do then is then just run over it with the tractor. Um, very similar to what we did originally um, once we made that cut I just ran back over on with the tractor over the um, the cuts itself and um, and then we'll just have to see how it all pans out so but I can't see how it can't work if that <laughs> if that makes sense so this will be I don't know maybe two or three hundred mil maybe 200 150 200 mil below the surface so whatever surface water I've got just coming just under that subterranean layer, it should pick this up. This will be the easiest path of route for the water and exit. But also too, when we're getting overflow, um, I'm hoping or sort of expecting that that'll be slow enough so that it can then seep back into the ground. So, but anyway, we'll <laughs> it's all about trial and error. All right, so I've got to get myself sorted out now and I'll get this off the path that um, I want to cut and we can go from there. I'll see you soon. All right, so <laughs> we finally got it all in. Point of, um, point of note, don't squash it because within about five seconds later, or probably not five seconds, but about 10 minutes, it goes back to its original shape. Like whoever would have thought. So we had to do two runs with the pipe layer and then with the shovel and not fun, not fun. But in saying that, we've got it in and I want to show you, I've got the pump running at the moment just as a bit of a test. And I can see what's happening here is that the water has come through and left the Aggie pipe. And imagine if this was all full of soil, um, so that would all be soaking in. But once it got to a point where it was then, this is pretty much full now. And so what's happening is that it's going back into the pipe and then running around. And that's pretty much what I really wanted to to make sure that this was going to happen. So in the dry periods, like now, this will all just sort of soak in and, and do all the things that it needs to do. But during winter, when the ground is already wet and hydrated, that the lowest or point of resistance will be inside the pipe. And then the, the water can then pass its way through. So I won't know exactly until during or during winter, um, especially for that section through here. Um, but it works. It's working exactly the way that I thought it would because you know we, we use this a little bit at work, but we use it for the the opposite. So trying to take water away where I wanted water coming out. So you know I can even hear water running through. So, which is great, absolutely great. So I'll get this permanently connected to the, the rainwater tank now. And because this is on timer um, and depending on what's gonna be happening, there will be chances where during summer it will just overflow. 
and this is really what I wanted to then capture was that um, that rain from the top lake uh, or that water from the top lake I've got the heat stroke <laughs> and um, and then actually put it to good use so using rainwater tank to your best advantage don't use the drip irrigation you'll get a back backlog and it just can't come out fast enough you need something that can really let the water out all right so like and subscribe and i'll see you soon